you. I celebrate Juneteenth, proudly eating watermelon right out the rind. I celebrate Juneteenth eating the skin off of fried chicken because you know I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> I celebrate Juneteenth slamming some dominoes with my little brother who has never beat me except in his own mind. <laughs> I celebrate Juneteenth electric sliding. I celebrate Juneteenth playing everything from Tupac to Frankie Beverly and me. I celebrate Juneteenth, and black people celebrate Juneteenth, and we don't need permission to have our own cookouts. And no, Karen, you are not invited. <laughs> Keep your raisin-laden potato salad to yourself, because today is a day for a black jubilee, a day for a black jubilee. I want to uplift what Juneteenth means, and why it is our most joyous holiday. Juneteenth is a day when black people took freedom for ourselves. I know that when you read the textbooks, it'll talk about Granger's Field Order Number 3, and about some white man who rode up in Galveston, Texas on a white horse and said, black people, you are free with all the rights of anyone else so you stay quiet in your own homes. And black people said, oh no. Because we know we brought ourselves our own freedom. It wasn't some general riding up on a white horse. We know that freedom from chattel slavery, chattel slavery, which not only, and in my um, college classes, when I teach critical race theory, and I do, right? Sometimes my students walk into the classroom and they think that the period from 1619 to 1865 was a period when black people were made to work for free. And they think, well, what's the difference on my Hispanic-serving institution campus? They think, what's the difference? And we have to uplift that that's not what chattel slavery was. See, the word chattel means they attempted to turn our people into property. And a period of enslavement in this country was about dehumanizing our people. And so for all of those 400 years, we had to hold on to our humanity and our divinity and claim to ourselves the truth about who we are. And so when we said we're going to hold on to our humanity and to our divinity, we were divinely inspired to take our own freedom. See, freedom didn't come by some white man on a white horse or by someone in a top hat named Lincoln declaring that we are now free. It wasn't an emancipation proclamation. 